The day I made this pumpkin loaf, I couldn't believe how moist it was and I worked out why later. All right, one of the things that you need to do in this bread is make flax eggs. And so that's three tablespoons of flax to nine tablespoons of water. And you add it to a bowl. I'm winging this right now. I know exactly what three tablespoons look like. And then you're gonna add nine tablespoons of water, which I think it's about that much. And then you're gonna let that sit and do its thing, okay? And after it's sat and done its thing, it's gonna look like this. It's very eggy, and it's exactly what you want. Defrost your bananas first, then do that part. The next step is making sure all your ingredients are out, you're centered, the music's on really loud, preferably reggae for me, New Zealand reggae. Oh my God, black seeds, catch a fire, fat Freddy's drop, LAB, you name it, I love it, Lady Six, it's all there. I just love New Zealand reggae, I'm a big fan of reggae. Music's on really loud, everything's organized, oven's on, and we're ready to go. The first thing you can do is grate your pumpkin. Okay, so I have my spelt flour, my coconut sugar, cinnamon, my raising agent, and some beautiful allspice, and a pinch of salt. And you wanna give this a really good stir. Now you're gonna mix your wet ingredients together. Those bananas that look really, really interesting and you're kind of thinking to yourself, gross, but my God, they make everything so moist. Your flax gooey eggs, vanilla paste, some coconut oil, and then your grated pumpkin. Just take out any of those big bits. Gonna mix the wet together, just mashing those bananas into the pumpkin and into the flax. So this looks like quite a dry batter and it is, and there's a technique to incorporating the wet and the dry together. And this is what I'd love you to do at home. So have a look at this. So you're just gonna grab some of it and just mix it together, just on the side like this. Just pulling in the flour to that batter, just like this. Just on the side, with a fork preferably. See, I'm not going in over there, I'm just staying into the corner here, making sure that's all incorporated. Once that's all incorporated, just have a little taste. I love flax eggs, because it doesn't taste like raw egg then. I can't stand raw egg, oh my God. You know, it's one of those things, right? Oh my God, that's beautiful. Okay, oven is on. Heating up, follow the recipe and the instructions below in the description. I've got a lined bread tin here, which is perfect. And now I wanna put the batter into here. Make sure it's all evenly spread. And into the oven it goes. The whole house is gonna smell amazing. Make sure you put it on the middle rack, okay? 
It's really important. I baked some stuff in this oven a while ago and I put it low down and it burnt. So just get, just make sure it's on the middle rack. It's really important. So I need my timer set. It's gonna take around about 50 to 55 minutes, depending on your oven. And then after it's cooked, you just wanna sit it on the bench and let it cool completely in that bread tin before we even pull it apart and put it on a wire rack. The house is smelling amazing. Oh my God. Hot, hot, hot. Don't get too cocky and think you can just jump into it straight away. Let it cool. Like a good hour and a half, just cooling in there. Have a look at this tin. I love that. <laughs> Epic. It is so moist. Seriously moist. And I'm gonna keep this in a container in the fridge. Sealed glass container in the fridge. And it's gonna be epic when all my mates come over this afternoon. So here we go. This is how we're gonna do things. So this is the rye flour. And just have a look at it how, like it's not white. It's got all its bits. And that's what I love about this flour. It's very earthy. And very simply, everything is gonna go in this bowl. And we're gonna mix everything together, like I said, with a knife. I've got my baking powder and some almond meal. Now the almond meal sometimes has like lumps and chunks in it. So just make sure you get all those out when we're mixing this in a minute before we add the liquid. We've got coconut sugar. It's just a little pinch of salt. Now I really want to mix this up because you can see these chunks of almond meal. And I just want to get them and make sure I break it all down. So I've got my dates ready and I've got two types of dates here. I've got dried dates. Now look at the colour of them. The only reason why I'm using two types is because I didn't have any of the medjool ones. This is the medjool one. Almost jewel-like compared to the dark ones. And then I'll show you this. This is the difference. Hang on. This is dried dates, which I've just chopped up. And this is a medjool date, which I've just opened up, taken out the seed and just basically broken everything up. There's that seed into this. Now the dried ones don't have any seeds at all. Just put that aside. And next I've got my coconut milk. And I've got a tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon. Just doing it like this so I don't catch any pips that go into my milk. And now I'm going to add the baking soda. And that's going to start to bubble up, which is what I want. Right. It's going to aerate everything. I've got my coconut yogurt in there as well. Oh, that's really bubbling up now. Get all that out. really does aerate it, the baking soda and the lemon juice. It's just activated. Okay, with my knife, I'm gonna stir the flour and the dates. You can use any knife, I just have to have this one in front of me. And then the liquid, 
going to go into here. Now remember, we're not going to be kneading. It's so bubbly, it's awesome. We're not going to be kneading a lot because we don't want this to be a hard bread. We don't want the gluten to be activated so much. So we're just mixing. Just incorporate it. It's literally seconds. You notice how there's a little bit of flour down there. It's totally fine. This is what they're going to do. So I'm going to grab a tray and some baking paper. And I'm kind of thinking like you're probably thinking it should be kneaded more, but please don't because it's going to go really tough. And that's why there's little bits of it of flour down the bottom. Okay, I've got a little bit of flour aside. Cooking is such, it's all technique really, isn't it? Okay, let's dump this out on the board. Perfect. Just very gently, very gently, gather it up. Push it together. Flatten it out a little. Good, don't stick on me. There we go. Great. Straight onto here. And then with your knife, going to cut and just mark through. Well, not all the way down. Just making that mark. Nice triangles. Bit of that flour that's on the board. Sprinkle it on. Make sure those cuts are very obvious. God, it feels like it's going to fall apart, but trust me, it's not. Make sure you've preheated your oven. I forgot to say that in the beginning, but I've preheated it on 200 Celsius. Celsius, Celsius, and it's hot. <laughs> I can't wait for this. I'm gonna put it on kind of up the top of my oven because if I put it down below, it will burn the bottom of it. I don't want it to because it's quite a hot oven. I'm gonna cook it between 20 and 25 minutes and the whole house is gonna smell like rye bread because rye has a really unique smell compared to spelt or kumut. It's really quite beautiful, it's very grounding. Okay, now I'm babbling on, I'm gonna put it in. It's gonna cook for 20 to 25 minutes, no longer than that. Um, it is a high heat, I mean 200 is a high heat. And when it comes out, I'm going to let it cool down a little. And when I mean a little, I want to be able to pick it up and touch it and open it up and put some coconut yogurt on it and maple syrup and all the things, right? But if it's too hot, it's going to crumble and it's just coconut yogurt is going to melt and it's just going to be like cream. It's going to be gross. So I'm trying to get that kind of like in between cool down, but just a touch warm, just like a touch warm, if that makes any sense. Now, this is not going to rise like a, a, a huge loaf of bread, you know, like bread rises like, because there's no leaven in there. There's no wheat in there. So it's not, uh, sorry, no wheat. There's no yeast in there. It's got baking soda and baking powder. And it's just gonna do its thing. So it's gonna be quite dense, but hoping it's gonna be light in between. Jeez, I hope I don't stuff it up actually, because I've only made it once. Anywho, 20 minutes.
The whole house is smelling really beautiful. It's really quite warming actually and grounding when you're baking, especially something like this. And that, like I said, the rye flour is quite exquisite. Wow. It's actually a really quite airy. I can tell on the top because it has risen a tiny bit. Oh, it's going to be lovely with a cup of tea. Now I'm going to let this completely cool down. I am not going to touch it. Do not touch it, Cynthia. And when it's completely cooled down, I'm going to smother it in maple syrup, maybe some jam and some coconut yogurt. It's going to be my cream. Yeah, great. This is cooked beautifully. Okay, leave it be. I love how rustic this is. It's cooled down completely. I'm just gonna put it here. I'm glad that I had those triangles already pre-cut. hard to cut that one. Okay, so I want to take, oh look at that in there, hello. And I want to slice it down the middle. Perfect. And then I want to put it on my little platter because we're all going to have some of the coffee or in a tea. You can have jam if you want jam. I know my girlfriend Michelle would love it with jam. And then you can have it with the yo uh, coconut yogurt, it's kind of like cream, right? Yeah. Or you can have just coconut yogurt on it, like this. With maple. It's up to you. I'm gonna try this one. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Yum. Mmm. Very easy recipe. Really, really super simple. So come with me and follow me on this really cool journey of making hot cross buns. So we're going to start, so I've got this. Now if I didn't have this, I'd use my hands. Just like we did with the um, beautiful cinnamon scrolls. Um, just the same kneading process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all my ingredients into here. So I've got some lovely coconut oil for the fat. I've got some beautiful organic soy milk. Now you could use coconut milk. You could use rice milk, oat milk, nut milk. You could use water. You could use dairy if you're into dairy, some sort of a raw milk. You could use kefir. You could use any kind of liquid you like. I'm choosing soy milk at the moment because I, I have it. It's here. It's in the kitchen. And I don't particularly want to run to the shops. So it's there. I've got baker's yeast, which is a beautiful um, yeast that you can get anywhere. Look for the Bob um, Mills, Red Mills brand, which is awesome, and I love them. I've got some gorgeous caramel coconut sugar. I love using this stuff. It's very special um, from Indonesia. It's really tasty. It has a really delicious scent to it. It's quite lovely. Okay, I'm going to put now the flour straight into here. Now I've got a white spelt flour. Once again, I love spelt. And the reason why I'm using white spelt flour is because I want that fluffiness coming through. And if I used wholemeal spelt flour, I'd get, I'd get a little bit of that, but it'd be still a little bit denser and kind of quite, you know, stodgy, if you know what I mean. Like almost like one of those, you know those rock cookies? Have you heard of those? Yeah. One of those cookies. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be bready and doughy. Okay, straight into my beautiful mixer that my girlfriend Simone let me. I love you, Simone. Okay, straight into here. Okay, and straight on. So what I, want, what I want to do is I want to knead 
Okay, now remember, if you don't have one of these, don't panic. You can still need to. So I've got it on low, I'm gonna speed it up and I'm just gonna get this a good, a good whipping. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, so now it's kind of, it's kind of got together a bit. I'm gonna put my egg in straight away and I'm gonna put it into a bowl. I've gotta to remember to do that because sometimes mother nature doesn't come to the party. So in other words, I wanna make sure my egg is perfect. Pop that in. This is so cool. And I want some spices in there. I love the idea of putting um, clove in there if you have it. Clove power. Pl uh, power. Clove power. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> clove or cinnamon. Okay, just a good splash. I mean, look at this. This is just beautiful. Look at this stuff. It's just, oh, it's so lovely. I want to put some nutmeg in there too. Now, if you don't have nutmeg and you just have clove, don't worry. It's okay. Don't panic, whatever you do. Let me just lower this down so I can get in there. These are great, look at these. Check this out actually. These are whole nutmeg. And all I've been doing, I've just been, oh, this was, if this was smell vision you could smell this. Look at the beautiful texture in here as I'm grating. Isn't it amazing? That's mother nature, it's quite gorgeous, lots of flavor. So I'm, I'm at home. I don't have cloves, but I have cinnamon. I've got cloves. <laughs> but I've got nutmeg and I've got some cinnamon. That's fine. Totally fine. Now, if you wanted to, you totally could put some allspice in there. So that's in. Delicious. Delicious. I'm just going to scrape around the bottom a bit just to pick that up. And then I'm going to put my beautiful currants in here. Now, if you didn't have currants, Think about what, would you, what you'd use. I would use sultanas, for sure. I'd mix some apricots if I had apricots or if I had figs. I'm just giving you an idea of what you can use if you don't have currants. So raisins, sultanas, sliced apricots, mix it with some figs, some chopped up figs, anything like that. So don't panic or run to the shops once again. Okay, straight into there, straight on. These are my hands, I'm gonna need this for a good Oh, eight minutes, and then we'll come back. So I'll see you in about eight minutes. Okay, this has been, this is great. This is so great, look at this. Nice and sticky, quite delicious. Now remember, back to when we made the, the scrolls and you don't have one of these. This is all going into a bowl, remember? and you're gonna mix it up with your hands and then you're gonna dust the surface of your table. You know, clear off your dining table if you don't have a lot of bench space. Just really find a spot where you can do it. I've actually done this on the floor before with a chopping board and sat with my goddaughter and actually kneaded bread. And, I, and it's just such a beautiful thing to do. So, flowering surface and then you're pushing and you're rolling. Pushing, rolling back, pushing, rolling back. Now look where my hand is. I'm using only this part of my hand, okay? It's really interesting. A lot of people get in there and do these ones. Don't do it, just really relax. Really relax and breathe and just do this. Okay, that's if you don't have one of these machines. But I'll see you back in about eight minutes and then we'll get to it. Oh, we're taking care of this very needy hot cross bun. Get it, needy, needy? Okay, we're good. This has been running, it's awesome. Awesome. Okay, now I need to get it out of this thing. All right. <laughs> it's stuck. It's like glue, look. Look at the gluten in that, in that flour, it's amazing. All right. This is awesome and it smells and tastes great. Okay, I'm gonna put it into a bowl. A little bit of coconut oil. Same as the um, scrolls just so the dough doesn't stick on the bowl as it's rising, so it's all ready to go. Okay, get it out of there. All the raisins are, sorry, the currants are all nicely incorporated. Let's pop it there for a minute. Oh, it smells, it smells like a bakery. Okay, same as last time. I keep going back to the cinnamon scrolls because you know, that's our reference point, let's be honest. We're both baking together. This is it, just turning it, as you can see under there. I'm just pushing it under, like this. And 
going straight into here, straight into a warm area. So my stove is nice and delicious and warm and toasty. And then this straight on there, a nice tea towel and over here. And then we'll see you back in about 25 minutes. Yes, have a green juice, chill out. Our hot cross buns mix has been sitting over there and I swear to God, the place smells like a bakery. It's really awesome. Come, 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 come. So yours has been sitting in a nice warm place as well. Super, super important. So the oven is on, remember, and it's been running um, on. So I need it to be super hot. <gasps> so what I want to do is I want to um, push this down a bit and I would love to make at least, oh, maybe, I don't know how many we're going to make actually, a few um, hot cross buns. Now what I love love, love, love about this moment is I want the cross on there. And how I'm going to get there, <laughs> how I'm going to get that is with really dark wholemeal spelt flour. And I'm going to make a little slurry of glory. So it's just flour and water and salt really. Just a little bit of salt. <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually funny because I never knew how they did the crosses, right? It's pretty funny. So this is how you do it to make that cross. So I want to get this ready and with us so we can just jump straight into it. So I need to make, and the reason why I call it a slurry is because it's gonna be looking and the texture of it's that kind of muddy slurry. Look at that texture, a little bit more water. How's my sink? Isn't it beautiful? Just mix that through, a little bit more water at a time. So all you're gonna do at home, right? It's just have that water running, just have that mixing through. Just a little bit, little bit like this, till we have a slurry. Okay, perfect. So you want it to be, you know, at least dripping off there. So start with a little bit of water at a time, like I said. This is fun. Now pretend, right? Pretend I don't have an icing bag, which I do, but I'm gonna pretend that I don't. I've got Ziploc bags hanging around. I've even used a shopping, a plastic shopping bag before. So I'm gonna put my slurry into here. Or even just a plastic, a plastic bag. You know what my mum does? She recycles all those plastic. You know when you go to the, gro the, the fruit store and you get apples and you put them in those plastic, really thin bags, she keeps all them. And they're great to use as well. So you're just gonna put that into there. Just like that. Get all that out. Put it into one corner. The slurry, just push it down like this. Perfect. And then we have a beautiful little icing bag of glory. I'm gonna sit that aside. This is cool. I'm glad I'm showing you this because I have girlfriends who like to bake that are good bakers and sometimes their icing bags burst and they don't have one. So this is what you can do. Where am I? I need a baking tin. And these, and I need some of that beautiful unbleached baking paper. Okay, now I've got a little bit of maple syrup. I just want this to stick down. You could use anything, it's just because it's there. So any kind of oil, just to make sure this sticks down, okay? That's all that's gonna do, it's just gonna stay there. All right, this is the next pit we wanna do. We want to, do I need flour? I do, just in case it sticks, right? A Little bit of flour on the workbench. Remember we put, oh, this is lovely and warm. Remember we put some coconut oil in the bowl and see how nothing gets stuck in there, which is kind of awesome. And straight onto our chopping board, just pushing it down a bit like this. I need a knife. And I would like to cut a strip like this. I'd like to get one. This is, this is a really cool technique. So you're gonna try and get them all the same size. You could, you could get some scales and weigh them if you wanted to, but what's really cool is doing this, just flattening them down a bit. And then just going across like that. And then you can get all the same size. Take that apart. Okay, just over here. 
a bit of flour, get present. I just want to make this into a ball, really. I want it to look like a hot cross bun. Boom, like that. Grab another one. Now, I'm not fiddling around with this too much. If that feels a bit big, take some off and set it aside and go through the whole batch doing this. And take your time, okay? And what you will find, this is what I did at first. I made different sizes and it was actually painful because some were overcooked and some were undercooked. And, but then you just get used to, used to doing it and it becomes really, really easy. So we'll do all this and I'll see you in a minute. All right, I'm up to my last ones, and look at them there. I think I've got bits and pieces, so I really want to knead that back in so I don't have a bizarre-looking hot cross bun. Pretty easy, isn't it? Seriously, just make the time. Get the, get the, get the value system happening around whole food, and this will just be your gig. Once a month, maybe once every two months, make these. You know, just keep it simple. Don't have to make them every weekend or anything. Okay, straight into here. Now, I want them to kind of be a little bit squished together. So touching, as you can see. And then we're going to make the cross part of this. this is super awesome. So how many did we get? We've got two, four, six, eight, nice big plump hot cross buns. Okay, hot cross buns. Scissors, rubbish bin, because you want, don't want to put this near your food. So I'm just going to cut a wee ism off there like that. This is quite runny. Now I'm going to be quite fast here, because I don't want them to be kind of straight lines and not wiggly crosses. <laughs> so straight on. And just go straight down the next one. And straight down the next one. Okay. Just a bit there. Okay, then turn it around. Make sure that's all in your hand and you're feeling really comfortable here, yeah? And if you muck it up, doesn't matter. The first time I did this, dude, it was like this. I was like, oh. don't worry about it. Just, you'll get there in the end after you make a few batches. Okay. Straight back over to the stove in a warm place and we'll come back to this in about 15 minutes and I'll see you then. Look at this, this is beautiful. 15 minutes, see you soon. It's amazing, can you see that? I'm not gonna speak. This is, this is the no speaking episode of the raising of the hot cross buns. They've risen beautifully. Look at them. They're ready to go in. I want to put just a little bit of this maple syrup. Just a little bit. Just paint it with my very dodgy brush. <laughs> you know, in the perfection, there's imperfection, right? And I love my dodgy brush. Okay, I just want to do that just a little bit. You don't have to. I just feel like I want to. Strain into the oven and I'll see you back here. I reckon 20, 30 minutes. We'll just see, hey? So your oven's heated and you know, you've, you've come with me along this far. So straight into the oven and I'll see you very, very soon. The hot cross buns are just about ready like a minute. Now I just want to go over a couple of, couple of things here. So when I made the slurry, remember, and I iced it on, I felt like I made it a bit too runny. So have, if you want it thicker, then don't put as much water in and then you get that kind of, it'll, it'll kind of sit up higher, that kind of cross. Um, the second thing is this oven needs to be on quite a high temperature. So right up there around 200 actually, 200 C, 200 degrees. And just be mindful of that because a lot of ovens operate on different, different temperatures. Some operate really high and they have a fan forced 
and some operate quite low on that temperature. So just be mindful. So checking on this every now and then. 10 to 15 minutes. And look what's happened here. They have, they have, com they have just gotten together like hot cross buns do. Now what I want to do is add some maple syrup onto this to just get them really lovely and glossy. Stop it. Look at that. I'm 30 seconds in front. Beautiful, just like that. You can just see the cross, right? Don't touch them. <laughs> Don't let me eat these hot, because I tend to do that. I want them to get cooled down a bit, and then we'll um, have a cup of tea, nice chai, and have these. Enjoy these. Let me know how you go. If you decide to put chocolate chips in them, get a really good quality chocolate chips. I love the idea of using Loving Earth chocolate. I think it's gorgeous. Play around with, the, with what, you, what, what fruit that you want to put in there. I'm salivating because I want to eat them. Don't eat them hot. Do not touch them with your fingers because you will burn your fingers. So just let them be and then put them on a wire rack. Just take them straight out like this of this thing and put them on a wire rack. See how that comes out? It's such ease and flow and sit them over there and allow them to cool. And I'll see you in the next recipe. Have fun with this.